Hello, Carol Taylor Carney here at Palian Arts, and I am with Deborah Miller, who has very fancy glasses and fantastic <laughs> artwork. So she's going to introduce us to the artwork and tell us a little bit about it. Okay. Uh, the name of the piece is Barking Up the Right Tree. <laughs> uh, it's primarily tree bark and the acrylic paint in the background. Um, Which looks like tree bark. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's got te- great depth in it. I texturize it to look like bark. That was going to be my first question. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I used um, um, molding paste and textured it. Um, what I usually do is go on, when I go on hikes, I'm always collecting bark and shells and rocks. And so I had all this bark, and I'm like, what can I do with it? So <laughs> I just started playing around, and I originally started out with plywood as the, the face mm-hmm. and, and bark at the bottom. And then I decided that I wanted to do bark with the face also and the hair. And, um, it was like putting a puzzle together. It was a lot of fun. Um, I just had a lot of fun. <laughs> um, that's how I approach my artwork. It's you know, it's yeah. We had a we had piece. We've had previous pieces from Deborah. Um, everything from painting to an another um, very large scale um, multimedia piece. That was based on a pre-Raphaelite painting. And the Lady of Shalat. It and, was called and, the Lady of the Pines. Yes. And um, I was going to say, and pieces that you collected from around the pines, every, everything from grit, oh, insulin pump. Everything from <laughs> grasses and, and um, reeds and moss and, and yeah. And this and this piece, um, it, uh, the face in that was beautifully painted and portrait-like. And the face in this is beautifully put together and and portrait-like. The lines are so very distinctive in the way that you paired the different pieces of bark. Did you- It looks, actually looks very anatomical. So uh, could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I'm gonna add a little something to that, which is, did you have to manipulate them to get it that way or you picked pieces? Picked pieces, and then I did a, a mostly picked pieces, um, which is fascinating. Of yeah. Manipulated with like breaking pieces off and stuff like that, because <laughs> so they, um, they weren't all the same size. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yes, mostly um, a combination of both, manipulated and nature and nurture. Yes, and and just as they were, well, I tried to find pieces that would work. Yeah. Well, you even did according to color because. The highlight that makes um, the upper part of the, yeah. of the eyebrow, uh, like all these little that subtle. Was, yeah, that was intentional. Different to find a piece um, that would. Yeah, I tried to make it. Well, and even sculptural. you use. Yeah, you use the more textural, uh, like in deeper pieces to do the yes. hair and the body, and I even like that you have the larger, uh, almost a piece of a branch that delineates kind of a collar and yes, uh, exactly. it's such interesting and minute detail. Um, it's so distinctive. Yeah. I'm glad you realized that by the neckline. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, your, well, your piece is... People realize that that's... The anatomy... The neckline or they think it's a bone stick. <laughs> to, to Carol's point, the anatomy of your pieces is always so very specific because you have such a good concept of the figure. Like, mm-hmm. uh, And so immediately when I saw that, I was like, for sure that's the neckline and even the pieces you used here go in like this almost like collarbones yeah, and so that was what I was trying to which get. I think was Carol what you meant when you were like the, the anatomy of it is dead on too yeah did you do a did you do a sketch in order to uh, come up with how you're going to put the pieces together no I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> that's the only the only I'm sketch sorry. was that I did was when I cut out of uh, plywood, which I did by hand. So I, did, <laughs> I don't have a uh, whatever a jigsaw or whatever. Yeah, yeah, whatever the equipment would be. So I I, I sketched um, a profile um, and plywood and just cut it out by hand. Oh, 
and somebody said, "Why? You should get these jigsaw puzzles. I mean, a jigsaw." And I'm like. Well, I don't have one. I don't so have I, one. I, I worked with what I had because I'm an artist and we're adapting. And I don't know how to use a jigsaw. <laughs> but no, that was the only sketch. The rest of it was just really, like I said, a, a puzzle. I mean, I had all the um, the bark there and I did pick out the, the different colors. And um, so it was all just like a putting a puzzle together. And I was trying to keep it. As an anatomically correct as I could with bark, <laughs> and um, well, it looks you know you, the way you're describing it, it's almost like trial and error in the same kind of way that you know you it was with an abstract painting. Yes, it was. It was like before I would glue it down, I would you know take a piece and see how it would work and how it would fit. Um, so, how, how did you come up with this idea? It's such a great idea, but I like I said, I had all this bark there. And I was like, oh, just try to do something different. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the way that you are comfortable experimenting with uh, unusual materials. And you, we were talking about this earlier. You have this, even when you paint a portrait, it always has a little turn in the composition or in the way you use the color and things like that, you always seem to give yourself a challenge and then meet that challenge, which I really like about yes, your work. Yes, I, yes, I, like I said, I, I, yeah, I, I know they say artists have styles and I guess, so I guess I do by using different material, but I just like, um, experimenting. Yeah. So I don't, you know, so I don't know if I have a style because I, just like the I think your style is, is that you use unusual materials in very um, refreshing ways and you you have such a good idea of what the like classic structures of things are. And then I would say your style is that you are willing to be playful in the mediums you use to to create. Those. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. like I said, I like to approach things. To, I like to constantly experiment. Which I love. And just, yeah. you know, have have fun with the different yeah. stuff. Well, then I'm we, going to ask you ask you a question that um, uh, p that people ask um, artists who seem to be able to automatically conjure out of their materials, and that is: Do you see faces in trees? Do you or do you see like some people say? Oh well, I I always see bunnies in clouds. Or I always see, you know, a dinosaur in class. Do you? I do always you? see more portraits, in, and because I do so many portraits, and that's figurative art is really. Uh, so you can find a face in anything. Probably. I mean, I <laughs> when I look at clouds, I know I probably see faces more than yeah, <laughs> than anything right. else. Um, yeah, yeah, I probably see more faces because, there. like Deborah Butterfield who does these horses and she does them out of trees. Uh, and she, and she, um, as she was uh, becoming the great artist, Deborah Butterfield, um, she, they actually, when she went to grad school, they told her no more of these horses things. So she ended up making saddles. Um, <laughs> but, um, but, the, but the thing is, is like, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking back to the other piece that you had had here and how um, it not only had this beautifully painted portrait, but even paper that was made. Yeah, the picture plane was, you were using relief techniques and then, yes, for them playing yes, with the picture yes, plane. Yes, sculptural. Um, I tend to, yeah, I, I tend to add a sculptural element to my paintings with, by, yeah, by yeah. paper or yeah. some, you know, some sort of, uh, like the reeds, and so there is a mixed media sculptural quality to. Yeah, and this is very built out. I mean, to a point where you couldn't just leave this on a flat picture plane. That you've built it out to a point that it needs to be in its own box. Yeah, and the the shadow box is very nice because it allows you. We've talked about this with uh, several of the artists where it allows you to enter in and engage 
with it as if it gives you a window through which to approach, which is nice. Yeah, and it, since it's bark, it's probably fragile and definitely needs to be. So you know what? It's, it's, it serves two functions. It gives you an entry through the right. window and, and also and it protects, keeps it safe. Right. Because like, uh, yeah, maybe we, I we secure this up a bit. I was frame it and I was like, I think this needs to be I think you frame it perfectly. Oh, yeah. You did a beautiful job. And I so. like that you chose a black frame. Because it really melds it nicely is. into the yeah the background and and it it speaks it helps draw your eye to the lines of delineation which appear as black so it it all ties together. But I'm going to ask you a question about framing. Mm -hmm. um, like for some artists, um, and this could if you hadn't framed this, you could put this in a room and it would be like it just grew out of the wall or. Like I said, do you see faces or figures right. in trees? And putting it within <clears throat> a box, it sets it into its own world. Right. I yes, I like boxing things. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I like setting things off and, and I or offsetting things. And I think um Putting it in a frame gives it a, a context, and I'm like um, Caroline was saying, you can enter into it. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I, I really I like do. shadow boxes. <laughs> I like shadow boxes too. Like I, I, because it allows you to one engage with the deck, it gives you something to go into. It allows like you to have nicely controlled light. There's a lot of great things about shadow boxes. Yeah, and, and this and is perfect because of the the different uh, media I use and the depth I have to use it. Most yeah. of my stuff has to go to <laughs> boxes because of that, unless it's flat. But yeah. I tend to put a lot of dimension in my work. So yeah. Sorry. Well, compositionally too, um, you've given it just enough area so that I feel like he can breathe, and yet you were telling me about him. You're gendering it. Well, we don't know. It could be a lady. It could be could be non-binary. You them. don't know. How's that? Them. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Stop gendering things. Yeah, I don't like that. It's a portrait. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. Well, no, I, that's actually a good question. Yeah. Um, do you see this as a male, a female, or it? I saw know, it as a female. Of what we're going to see. A, there you gonna, go. If we're going to pick a gender. So, but it, it's, you have misgendered. I am so. It is ambiguous. <laughs> so, now it's in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> do, you, so. do you get an idea of age? Uh, huh? Young. I rather because it seems so sure. mysterious. Mm -hmm. um, because it seems but it's to leaving, be coming out. From it's this. leaving room now for people to infer their own, their well, own things. I was I thinking more that it's more like a mystical creature, and and the and they could be any age or eight. They've yeah, always I, been I never there. really thought of it. Well, I was thinking more like timeless. Yeah, you know, yeah. as you are, which is, you know, well, I was uh, like, trees that could be hundred years old. Like, and also, it's regenerative. It's also regenerative. Yeah, like, yeah, so, which is really cool. I got the bar. I, like I said, I always collect interest in bark yeah. or yeah. stones, or maybe I'll do something with, a rock, with rocks next because yeah. I have a bunch of those too. Oh, um, so. <laughs> I never thought of that. I can't, like, this is, I this never is, thought of that till now, but. You should yeah. do that, and also because you're a puzzler, so you fit pieces together, which will be really cool. So I really hope that uh, people come in and see this and can see the nuance, and um, it has to be all, of, most art is best viewed in person, but because of the layers here, especially this is really, it's got a warmth and an organicness that uh, really demands to be seen in person because it's definitely a relational piece, so. Yeah, so. Please come see Deborah Miller and her beautiful art. Barking Up the Right Tree. <laughs> I love the title. Yeah, that is a great title. <laughs> um, at Palane Arts from? For Portray It from January 19th through March 12th. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Deborah. Thank you. Thank you.